All right, we've had an introduction into radical reactions, uh, namely the free radical halogenation reaction. Let's see what would happen if we had a radical uh, reaction with an alkene starting material. And uh, the, the place we've seen that is addition of HBr to, a, to an alkene. Let's first review the, um, the original reaction that we saw, the very first reaction we ever saw of, of reaction of HBr with an alkene. Uh, we described it as Markovnikov addition because uh, we broke the pi bond and we add an H and a Br and the hydrogen went to the carbon with more hydrogens, right? It, the, the hydrogen atom went to the end carbon. The bromine atom went to the more substituted carbon. And we described that regiochemistry as Markovnikov, Markovnikov. Okay, now we saw that in chapter eight with alkene chemistry. Let's review that mechanism to see why we get um, Markovnikov addition of HBr here. So what does that mechanism look like? Um, what do you know about HBr's reactivity? HBr is a strong is a strong acid, right? So we see that we are in strongly acidic conditions. And so that is going to be our first step. Our first step is to protonate. That's what acids do. They protonate. We're going to protonate the pi bond. So two curved arrows to do that protonation, two curved arrows, the pi bond attacks the proton and kicks off the bromine. And this is what explains the Markovnikov rule, the Markovnikov addition. Let me move this up a little bit actually, so we can, we can look at both possibilities. So what we're gonna get is this carbocation, the other option, the other option, if I added the proton to the more substituted carbon, that would give a, a um, different carbocation. When I, when I compare the stability of these two carbocations, which one looks better? Here we have a secondary carbocation, and here we have a primary carbocation, right? And the primary carbocation is less stable. So this, so this is what explains Markovnikov addition. We add the proton to the carbon with more hydrogens so that the carbocation ends up on the carbon with more carbons. That's, that's what, what makes a carbocation more stable. Okay, so step one is form a carbocation intermediate. In that first step, we also form bromide anion, which is a nucleophile. So step two is simply nucleophilic attack. Nucleophilic attack, the bromide attacks the carbocation and we end up with our final product. So it's just a two-step mechanism, protonate and attack, protonate and attack. Okay, little reminder, if, if uh, as in this case, we form a new chiral center at this time, we're gonna get a racemic mixture. So we could say plus minus to indicate we have both enantiomers here, or we could just say racemic. And so in that case, we usually just you know, draw it as a straight line uh, because we just we know that, that we're forming a chiral center, so it must be both an answer is being formed. Usually we don't show the stereochemistry if there's just one new chiral center being formed. Okay, so um, quick, quick little review on what we know about uh, the, the normal um, addition of HBr with this carbocation mechanism. Now, what happens if instead of just using HBr, we use HBr with peroxides, with peroxides. So ROOR represents um, a class of compounds described as peroxides when you have two oxygens attached to each other. And all of a sudden we get a different outcome. Instead of having um, the hydrogen add to the end carbon, the hydrogen adds to the middle carbon. To the more substituted carbon and the bromine goes where there's more hydrogens. So we describe that as what? Anti-Markovnikov, anti-Markovnikov addition, the opposite regiochemistry. So that's pretty cool synthetically to know that, you know, you can kind of add it with either regio, uh, regiochemistry, but let's, uh, let's see what the mechanism is now. How, how does this happen? How does this happen? Okay, well, because we have peroxides, those are very, very, um, uh, easy to form radicals. And that's what's gonna happen is we're gonna have a radical mechanism. So the first step is going to be an initiation, 
initiation, sorry, initiation. <laughs> We're gonna have an initiation step. Remember that's a step that generates radicals and um, peroxides are so, so good at this because this OO bond is so very weak. Remember oxygen is so electronegative that it's really not sharing those electrons well. It's super easy to break this bond. So we're gonna break this bond homolytically, homolytically, and it's going to generate two, um, two oxygen radicals. So as soon as you have peroxides, you guarantee to have radicals. And once you have radicals present, those now can um, react with the HBr that we have in high concentration. We could do an atom abstraction. We'll go back to red here. I don't know, for some reason I'm using red <laughs> for these mechanisms. So we're gonna do an atom abstraction. So, um, so eventually the, the peroxides will just be converted to stable alcohol molecules. And what we're gonna end up with is the buildup um, to some extent of bromine atom, bromine radicals. Okay, so these, these would, we would describe as our initiation steps to get the bromine radical. Now that we have a bromine radical, what can the bromine radical do? The bromine radical, what can any radical do? It can either do an atom abstraction or it can add to an alkene. And now because we have an alkene present, that's gonna be the next step that takes place. So it is the bromine radical that adds to the alkene. So uh, just kind of like a little hint here, we're gonna be forming the bond here between the bromine and the radical, uh, uh, bromine and the carbon. So what does this mechanism look like? We break the pi bond, one electron pairs up with the radical and the other electron stays behind. So what's gonna happen is the bromine adds to the carbon-carbon double bond. And we form a new bond there and we, it also leaves a radical behind. So we describe this as a propagation step because we started with a bromine radical now we have a carbon radical, <clears throat> and once you have a carbon radical, that means you can you can just keep going with your radical mechanism. Okay, now this is the step that decides our regiochemistry. It's the bromine atom that's adding first. Remember up here, we protonated first. So it was the proton that added first, the hydrogen. And um, uh, But now the bromine is adding first. So let's consider both paths. If the bromine were to add to the second carbon instead of the first carbon, it would form this radical. And so these are our two competing intermediates. So as always, we look at our competing intermediates and we decide who's more stable. So what do we have in this case? We have a primary radical down here or a secondary radical up here. And which one is more stable? Which one is more stable? It's the secondary one. So this is going to be less favored. This, this is uh, disfavored. And so it's gonna be the, um, Let's just explain this while we're here um, and then we'll finish up our mechanism. So, so, so why is it anti-Markovnikov? Why is it anti-Markovnikov if we had to explain that? Well, one, one thing we could point out is that it gives the more stable radical. It gives the more stable radical. That's always important is to get the most stable intermediate possible. But another interesting fact here is that the uh, halogen atom uh, is also larger. And so there's some steric components, uh, steric component to the, to the selectivity as well. So um, also we could point out also the BR adds to the less hindered carbon. BR adds to the less hindered carbon of the, uh, of the alkene. So there's actually, a, both of those support the, the bromine going to the less substituted carbon. All right, so now I have this radical. Uh, what can a radical do? Radical can do atom abstraction or add to an alkene. So this is how we're gonna finish up our mechanism is I'm gonna bring in HBr, which we have uh, you know in high concentration and we're gonna do a hydrogen atom abstraction, a hydrogen atom abstraction. So I break the HBr bond and that pairs up with the radical and I leave the electron here on the BR. So that now I have my finished product. I have my final product, anti-Markovnikov addition, right? Anti-Markovnikov addition uh, across the double bond. And what else did I form in this step? What else did I form in this step? I regenerated my bromine radical 
and this can continue, et cetera. Chain reaction, chain reaction. So our mechanisms are completely different in the presence of peroxides because radicals are present. And so what we're looking at in, uh, without peroxides is who's the most stable carbocation that leads to their Markovnikov product. With peroxides, we're saying, oh, who's the more stable radical? That's what leads to our product or anti-Markovnikov product. So just want to make sure you had a good background and mechanism for that explains um, where that comes from. Okay, um, what else can we talk about? How about some synthetic strategies? Um, how can, now that we know about this free radical halogenation reaction, well, actually, we just we just looked at how um, this is great synthetic strategies. Anytime you have two reactions or reaction conditions that are complementary to each other, right? This gives Markovnikov. This gives anti-Markovnikov. That's fantastic to have in our synthetic toolbox because it gives us a lot more variety. Okay, but what about the free radical halogenation reaction? Let's think about um, trying to do a, a transformation like this. Um, let's say I start with an alkane starting material. If you ever start with an alkane starting material, guess what? There's only one reaction we know <laughs> for an alkane, and that is the free radical halogenation. Um, you know, other than, well, yeah, I guess we could burn it, but that's not really useful synthetically because it gives us carbon dioxide and water. Um, so, uh, so thinking about an alkene, um, how do you make an alkene? You, do, you make an alkene by doing some kind of elimination reaction, uh, which means I need a leaving group, right? I wanna do an elimination. Let's just think about our, our thought process here. And which means I need a leaving group. I need a leaving group. And I'm starting with an al alkane. So remember our goal usually in our synthesis problems is to kind of come up with some stepping stone structure here. So you can kind of work backwards a little bit and say, what did I need to make this alkene? And, or in this case, you could work forwards a little bit because once again, there's only one reaction available to us uh, with an alkane starting material. And that's always gonna be true. This is it, it's free radical halogenation. So I could use free radical halogenation Remember, bromination is the one that is more selective. So if I did Br2 and light energy, H nu to represent light, Br2 and H nu, what would that do to methylcyclohexane? What would that do to methylcyclohexane? It would selectively, very selectively, take this hydrogen atom and replace it with a bromine atom. So I can make an alcohol halide. Now I have a leaving group. And now I could do my elimination reaction. So how would I how would I take an alcohol halide and convert it to an alkene? I need some. I need to do an elimination. How about an E2 elimination? I need a super strong base, right? I want to do E2, which means strong base. So uh, this is a tertiary leaving group. So actually, SN2 is not going to happen at all. So it actually doesn't really matter what base you use, any strong base. This is the only possible mechanism that's going to happen. We can't do backside attack. So you could just use sodium hydroxide, right? Uh, or ethoxide, methoxide. You choose. Um, sorry, ethoxide, methoxide, your choice. Okay, what I don't want to use is t-butoxide. Do you see the problem here? is I want to do uh, not just an elimination, I want to do a Zaitsev elimination. Notice I'm getting a very substituted alkene out. If I did the T-butoxide, if I use T-butoxide, that would not be good because what kind of, what, what uh, regiochemistry does that give us there? That gives us the Hoffman elimination. And the Hoffman product means I'm going to go, what I, what I want to do is I want to remove this proton, right? I want to remove the more substituted proton to give the more substituted alkene. The more substituted alkene, if I did T-butoxide, it would go for the proton that's up here and I would get the less substituted alkene. So that would give me the wrong product that would not give me my, uh, my desired alkene. So we have ways to add in leaving groups, you know, at one position or another uh, by, by, um, using Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov, or now we can use free radical halogenation to install a leaving group, um, a bromine where you had no functional group at all. And then once you have that leaving group, we can 
do an elimination reaction with Zaitsev regiochemistry, Hoffman regiochemistry, so we could get whichever alkene we want by choosing the appropriate base. So all sorts of transformations. Our synthetic toolbox just keeps growing and growing and growing. And we're capable of so many interesting transformations when we do synthesis problems. All right, that's a good stopping point. Those are all our reactions of, um, of radicals, additions to alkenes and free radical halogenation. Um, there's one last topic that I'll discuss and that is reactions um, of radicals, you know, in the outside world, in the real world that are, that are all around us, not something we might use in the laboratory to do a, uh, to do a transformation that's synthetically useful, but ones that happen out in the real world. So that'll be our last topic and I'll see you then.